We're ready? The Recreation and Parks and Cultural Affairs Council Committee Special Committee meeting on December 21, 2022. Uh, roll call. Josh Goldstein. Here. John Kites. Here. Jen McMurr. Here. And I'm here. Absent is Nicole Ayers, uh, Brian Meek, and Lisa Shanahan. We have approval of the minutes of November 9th. Okay, uh, Jen moves the item, all in favor? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Delaine, is there any public participation? No, there's not. Okay, thank you. There is no old business. We'll move on to new business. The city of Norwalk reserves the right to cancel the event for public health for safety reasons as determined by the city of Norwalk and its sole discretion. Norwalk shall not be liable for damages arising from the cancellation of the event. 5 1. Approve the use of Brian McMahon and Silvermine Elementary School and immediate surrounding grounds by Club Connecticut for their Boston Build Up 10K and 25K event to be held on Sunday, January 8th and March 5th, 2023, from 8 30 a.m to 11 a.m. set up to begin 8 a.m. with tear down at 11 a.m. approximately 100 people. Will someone move the item? Thank you, Ms. McMurr. I have someone here to talk about that quickly. Do we have any questions about that? All in favor of the event, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? Nope. 5-2, authorize a purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Gabrielli Isuzu truck sales for a refuse truck in an amount not to exceed $124,280, funding from the D grant. Someone move the item. Thank you, Ms. McMurr. Uh, Mr. Stowers, you want to speak to that or Ken? Yeah, yeah I can speak on that. So we, um, we have an existing garbage truck, which is seven years old. So we're looking to get a replacement truck uh, to use as a backup. Uh, so we did go out to bid. Uh, Gabrielli was the lowest bidder out of three bids. They came in at 124, 126, and 130. So we're looking for approval. And this is out of the new DEEP grant. And the reason why we don't have a account number for it yet is we're working with finance at the moment on how to set that up. It's a state reimbursed grant. So we're just trying to set up an account where we can pull money out of and then put money back into. So that's why there's no uh, designation yet on the account numbers, but it is paid for with the DEEP grant. Okay. And also, this will allow us to have two mini packers, and now we only have one. When it's down, it's down, and now we'll have two. And it'll take a little while to get it though, because these things have to be special made, special made, special ordered. But it's an improvement. How long do you think it will take? Maybe about a year. Maybe a year. Yeah. Maybe about a year. Wow, that's that's a long time. Uh. The big, the big garbage trucks can take as long as two, two to three years because they have to actually, they have to actually uh, make them. <laughs> they don't, wow. they don't, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions for Mr. Stowers or Mr. Hughes? Uh, if not, all in favor? Please say hi or signify. Uh, hi. Okay. Unanimous. I'm so. Number five three. Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute a contract for the acceptance, donation, movement, and placement of the Norwalk Harbor Splash Dragon, it's a dragon boat trophy in City Hall as part of the Norwalk Art Public Project. Is that correct? Public art collection, yeah. Okay, will someone move the item? Thank you, Ms. McMurr. I'm, I'm going to call on the other two in a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Feel free. Um, I, I think we talked about this. We did. Sabrina, we so I, I'm sorry? Sabrina, does she have anything to add? Sabrina? Add to that. I'm sorry, Sabrina. Go ahead. Apparently not. <laughs> no. I think she's having some issues with her audio. Okay. okay. You know, I think we talked about this, and it's a very yeah. small piece, but I think it was part of the process because we didn't have a formal plan. And so it's a very small piece. It's going to move into this building from the health department. So I think yeah. we're okay with that. We talked yeah. about that. So all in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Uh, five four authorize the mayor Harry W. Reeling to execute a contract for acceptance, <laughs> donation, movement, and placement of the Attitude Crossing sculpture to the Art Park on West Avenue, and as part of the Norwalk Public Art Collection. Did someone move the item. Thank you, Ms. McMurr. Um, you know, Robert, you can you can speak to it again, but I think we talked about this at our last uh, meeting. <clears throat> Um, yeah, we, we talked about it, uh, and um, at that point, we didn't really uh, feel that it should go in Cranberry Park. I think we've all decided now that it should go in the Art Park. It's the most uh, best place for it. Um, things have already been uh, negotiated and signed, and we talked about this in um, one of your caucuses, and um, I think it was explained very, very in, in great detail. So I think we should accept it. Yeah. Anyone uh, have any comments, questions about it? I just wanted to briefly say thank you for putting together, Mr. Stowers, the policy that we're going to be going over in a little bit. Um, I don't know how much discussion there will be around that, but that was one of the requests that we had made when we last discussed this. And so I just wanted to say thank you for putting that together um, so quickly and being so thorough about that, because now I feel very comfortable accepting these types of donations on behalf of the city. And you. Okay. I, I completely, I second that as well. Um, it's. It, it, the policy is important, but I also just wanted to signal and thank the donor who was willing to donate such a wonderful piece of art to the city. Absolutely. I want to chime in. Yeah, I guess I'm on a completely different opinion. And, yeah, mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you, Robert. I mean, the last thing mm -hmm. I think you want to deal with is a seven foot ballerina. Um, <laughs> I mean, I thought we left this at, um, you know, the, the piece itself really, I mean, didn't, I don't know, I guess it wasn't, wasn't, I say, attractive to any of us. At least that's what I remember. Um, not kind of happy with how it went down. Like I said, Robert Ken, I know that you, have, you are not to blame for this. I guess the process kind of got screwed up along the, along the way. And uh, here we are with it. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just still not sitting right with me. Um, I know we've, you know, there's been a, a value placed on this and we're supposed to be thankful for it. I, and I'm just not quite there. Um, I think, you know, the donations the city should be receiving should be of some sort of historical value pertinent to Norwalk or Connecticut or just some historical value. Uh, and a six, eight foot ballerina, um, you know, and uh, with a rush, to, you know, so someone can get a tax credit isn't really, you know, selling it to me. So I guess I'll be voting no on this today. All right. So I, I you know, I'll, I'll just speak to that as well. I, I, I think, I think the process itself gave us pause, and and what it really highlighted um, this whole piece, um, um, this item was that the fact that we didn't have a formal process, and so it has moved us in that direction and getting those sorts of things done, so that we can have a formal process of review, um, and even um, addressing John's comments about the relevance of these art, of the artworks that we um, will take moving forward. Um, but with that, I, I, I'm going to support it. So um, if there are no more comments, so all in favor, signify by saying aye. I think it's aye. Okay, so it's three and- And I'm a no. Opposed or abstain? John? I'm a no. Okay. All right. So um, five, five. So we're going to just discuss and approve the North Recreation and Parks gift and donation and art acceptance policy. Robert. Yeah, this is a, a policy that was drafted. Um, me and my staff um, can, of course, uh, being the person that really has eye on the parks, being the superintendent of, of parks and park maintenance and open space, contributed uh, a, a deal to this uh, effort as well. Uh, but, you know, um, I don't know if we wanna go all the way through this um, or just, me just highlight some of the things in, in, the, in the policy. I, I think just highlighting, I think because we all had it. And, and okay. so, you know, okay. once we, 
we make some adjustments or if someone has some additional comments, because okay. it should be a, a, a living document. There might be things that we need to change in it from time to time, but um, if um, anyone hasn't given you comments, I think they need to do so. Okay. Um, okay, so well, I'll highlight just, a few things, yes. Okay, I'll highlight a few things. Yeah, I mean, uh, the preamble really kind of speaks to it. It says, no Recreation and Parks Department gratefully accepts gifts and donations from private individuals and entities and the services uh, the department provides uh, to the public. Lays out, this lays out uh, a, a, a review process for deciding whether under the circumstance accept a, a gift or create, and also creates a record keeping mechanism and sets forth guidelines for donor gift recognition. So, I think the purpose is to establish a policy, uh, criteria and guidelines and procedures for acceptance. I think um, um, as you go through it, we have the, uh, the agencies that uh, have a part in this uh, under organizations. And then f five is really a po is really policy that talks about the type of gifts that would be accepted. Um, it also uh, in section five, puts the restrictions and some of the restrictions of course is that we won't be given to uh, things, uh, donations that have uh, bear emblems of, of firearms, tobacco, alcohol, drugs. Um, I think uh, when we're not really obligated to, to, to accept a gift, we're not obligated to replace it if it's stolen. Um, uh, this uh, also uh, talks about preserving really the integrity of the park. So there's not a lot of pro proliferation and it does uh, allow um, certain gifts, uh, benches with metal engravings uh, as a memorial, but but people have to make a significant contribution as as John Cotty was talking about, some, some kind of historical, you know, he, he, he mentioned that there needs to be some kind of contribution made and, and and it uh, it defines a significant contribution as an in, impactful volunteer contributions, long-term outdoor stewardship efforts in natural areas, beaches, forest parks, areas and trails. Also, a person making a large capital contribution to the park system and/or the person has a long dedicated career of advocating or working in, in parks. So, there are some of the criteria that it, that it, it lays out. Um, then it, uh, the section goes on to talk about limitations, limiting uh, plaques, uh, not 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 banning them, but limiting them. Um, also having uh, those reviewed by the Art Commission. Um, it, it limits, uh, it talks about murals and limiting um, gifts to, uh, to built areas um, instead of open space. Uh, then it goes through, I um, did, didn't want, didn't feel the need for the council to um, to take up everything. So we tried to set a limit about $10,000 in value. We'll have to figure out how that value is placed and uh, how we assess the value. We'll have to figure that out. That can be added to this policy. But we thought anything over 10000 the council should have to approve. And and or uh, something that had a real physical impact on the park, mm -hmm. we we also put that. Number six the definitions we define again all the terms uh, in the in the in the uh, policy, and then uh, and then the responsibilities of myself as a director and Ken Hughes as the superintendent of open parks. So. Ken would play a big part in this. We we are we we've established a operations um, committee in our in our um, in our department. Uh, we don't want we will we don't want Robert Stowers deciding every little thing. We want a recommendation to come to me and then to the council, not only for this but for other things as well. Uh, capital. Um, me and Ken, we kind of sit in the corner and, and discuss what capital needs we need. We need to broaden that to the to the department and maybe even uh, some operations staff. So, <clears throat> so we we have a committee that will, uh, when applications come in, well, application process, they'll review it, and then they'll make a recommendation. Um, 
to me on, on how to proceed. Either this goes to the council, or we need it reviewed by the art commission, or we can just give information. We just accept it. So um, section eight is all about that, and then um, talks about uh, the application process, and then. Uh, of course, we would always give a, a, a letter of uh, recognition to the person who donates. Um, so that's kind of that kind of highlights um, what the policy does, but it does allow for a process. And if this was in place, we would have we would have went through this process and we wouldn't have got, got entangled up. Right. So, Thank so you. That's, that's what it what it is. John. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, going into this process, I kind of figured either, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the gist of it or the highlight of it, the main highlight, especially for me, was either, you know, the council approves or it's done internally uh, in your department. Um, and uh, that was kind of like the ultimate question on how this is going to proceed. And in, and uh, Robert, I believe you mentioned there's a, a, a number of, of $10,000, anything above that would go before this committee. Is that correct? Yeah, 10000 10, and above, yes. Okay, I mean, I, I just, I know a little bit about art. I mean, I just give you an example. I like, I'm personally looking at, you know, a, a art that's been supposedly valued at over $100,000. And I've realized <laughs> I can't even give it away. You know, art's one of those things where, you know, a, a value is, yeah, I guess it's, it's whatever someone will pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my question is, how are we going to value uh, these pieces? Uh, I mean, is, is there going to be a, a process in place? Because, I mean, uh, I wouldn't expect you, you or your department to be able to to do that or, you know, uh, I mean, or I mean, a, a, even even an appraisal uh, would be kind of, uh, I don't want to say biased, but um let's just say it can go in totally different directions i guess you know that i think just clarifying that it would be good for me and important for me to know yeah um, de definitely definitely and that that point has been raised and and we are looking for us find one uh we'll we'll find one and and incorporate it into the um there are there are, i know there are people uh, there are companies that assess art and um we would find uh, something that was credible to everybody. Uh, and Robert, you, you went out on that last piece, but I think to John's point, I don't know if the assessment is something that we should pay for or whoever is submitting that, but of course they're gonna assess it at the highest value, right? That they possibly could. But I think that's something that we need to um, look at and add into this. Um, yes. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, or just have some sort of process that we know that we're looking at the assessed value of what's being uh, considered for donation. Um, Josh, Mr. Goldstein. Um, thank you. I, I think that when it comes to assessments and appraisals, um, I would imagine that especially for this kind of thing, other municipalities have probably come up with a process that works. Um, I think that Robert, I know you and I had a couple conversations about this, and one of the conclusions that I think you came to was about that we're going to need, in addition to this policy, a corresponding ordinance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that I am wondering yeah. for things like appraisals, um, I would imagine it's something that it's an independent appraisal, probably jointly chosen or chosen by the city, um, that I would assume that the donor or the applicant pays for. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's the standard process, but I think that I, I, I would imagine that as you did research for this policy, I, I'm wondering if you engage other municipalities in the area or if they're just some sort of people who've done it well, um, because I do think that I, I agree with your sort of position on um, that we are gonna need to do an ordinance um, on this. Yeah, the law department very, 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 <clears throat> they really want to want an ordinance around this, and so I think that would be the next step. Um, yeah, I think in terms of uh, assessment or valuation, um, there are there are firms that uh, that evaluate. It just depends on um, 
in agreement um, on uh, on which which kind of firm or which kind of assessment or valuation company would would suffice for us. Um, so, yeah, it's something that we need to do, and uh, I'm going to move ahead, Darren, uh, to try and figure out this. Uh, I know I know this has to go to the ordinance committee if it's an ordinance. Um, so. Oh. But yep, the one and, thing, I, and I'm happy to help, as I said on the okay. ordinance committee. So okay, okay, this 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 helps us in parks because uh, one of the things that that you know we're doing we're working on our accreditation, and right. one of the things in the accreditation is the parks department itself. Just the department needs an, a, a gift and donation policy. So this will be one of the policies, one of the 65 policies that huh. we could locate in our gap analysis. So this 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 uh, this suffices that, and um, but we, but we would need a whole city ordinance, so it wouldn't just be parks department; it would be the city. Of, of. Great. Any more questions, comments? Okay. I actually oh. have one more, if you don't okay. mind, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, Robert, would this ballerina have um, gotten to us under these new adopted rules or soon to be adopted rules? Yeah. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, it would have. Whether what side uh, to uh, accept it, it would be um, up to the council, I guess. But yeah, it, it would. It would. It would. It would meet that uh, those thresholds. Okay, and if they just you know, if if say an item were undervalued under ten thousand dollars, it would be under your 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 purview to place that at where you feel it's appropriate. Yeah. Unless it's something that's going to make a, a significant impact on, on the park, and and that that's explained in the in the policy. Okay. And John, uh, I, I'm not so sure under this uh, the new document if this would have even made it to you guys because I don't know if the operations committee would have accepted it. To be honest with you, okay. so I think this you know this document also gives us a mechanism where we could turn something down. Oh, okay. And, and to John's question, I think even the size, did we say that? Because, you know, that ballerina is pretty big. Mm -hmm. Is there any, should a certain size of a, of a piece be something that we have to consider, that the council can consider, even if it's less than 10,000? That's just something to think about. Because Yeah, yeah. Does, yeah you know. I mean, that. I think that's what I meant about if it makes a significant impact okay. on the park. Okay. You know, uh, and that would that would because it's, it's come to it's, come to us. Okay. Any more questions for Robert and Ken? All right. All in favor, please say aye. Signify. Aye. 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 All right. As everyone has expressed, um, thank you, Robert, um, for pulling this together. Oh yeah. Uh, and your team and and mm -hmm. and Ken and everybody. Um, you said you were going to do it. We're going to do it, and we've got it before January, the beginning of the year, which is a good thing. So appreciate the effort. All Thank right. Yeah, we, um, we, we appreciate the support of this committee. And without yeah. this committee, we wouldn't. You know, we 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 really need the support in parks and recreation and uh, the committees. Since I've been here, you guys have been tremendous in being uh, our efforts, and there's a lot more efforts coming uh, as we take on. Um, other assignments and you know the master plans uh coming to a a a um a close here with this with the uh, implementation and development of a, to a strategic plan to implement it and uh ken and i um and chris tory we're going to take on this tree inventory uh project as well um from from dec uh so we've got a lot of stuff in the works and um we we um, I was talking to Alicia today, and I think we're going to probably be able to bring on um, a naturalist to help us with this. Thank so, that's fantastic. So we're working on a lot of stuff. <clears throat> All right, thank you very very much. We just we just we're headed in the right direction. It's a lot of work to be done, but we're headed in the right, the right direction. Is there any comments or anything you'd like to say about the capital budget where we are pro um, that process quickly? Yeah. Ken, you want to speak on the capital budget a little bit? Um, yeah, so I, I don't have it in front of me, but we did just mm -hmm. present to uh, internally to finance. I think it was well, well received. 
Uh, there is no surprises on, on the capital budget. You know, we have a few vehicles in there. We have a few playground replacements, some ball field replacement. Um, we are asking for some additional funding for uh, Broad River. Uh, you know, you know that's become a, a monster of a project. Um, uh, you know, we actually requesting uh, some possible additional money if, if we move forward with a, a secondary parks garage. As some of you may know, we're looking at 10 Tito Court as a possible uh, park maintenance south garage um, in South Norwalk. So if that does go ahead, we're going to ask for a little bit of funding there, do some work on the building. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's anything, you know, earth shattering. Um, you know, the ARPA money has really helped us get ahead of our playground replacement as well as some vehicle replacement. So that indeed helps save saves us some asks on the uh, on the capital side. On the operate on the operating budget, um, one of the things I wanted to do uh, when I came here, and staff we have we have a lot of staff. We have five or six staff that are major. They they should be full time, um, and so in the budget uh, we're moving things around a little bit and asking for a little bit of increase. Um, to bring these people to full time. These people have been working here for years without any kind of benefits. We have a person that's been working with the city for somewhat, almost 30 years, I believe, and and, and don't, don't have health insurance from, uh, from the city. So um, it's important to these people make commitment to us. We, we, we need to make a commitment to them. Plus they're just, they're just, they're just um, functional, uh, core positions that we need full time, anyway. And so, mm -hmm. um, so I've talked to the mayor and I've talked. We went to finance. They seem to be um, receptive, but we'll see. You know, they still have to balance the budget, so I'm always aware of that. <laughs> always Great. aware of that. All right. If there's nothing else, I can have a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to adjourn. All in favor. We're all in favor. Everybody have a good holiday. Have, have a wonderful you too, have a holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Everybody. Happy holiday. Thank Happy you. Holiday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.